Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Tell me if you can hear me well, please. Everything's working. Always start. If anyone can say on the chat. Happy Sunday. Um, yeah. How are you all doing today? Oi, oi, oi. Um, how are you all doing today on this Sunday? Room ready to work with me or just chill? How are you all think, uh, feeling? Uh, just a reminder, I'm Leticia Gillett. Um, this series is sponsored by Lenovo. And uh, this used to be uh, hosted by Josh Herman. But he had other things to do and I took over. So here I'm at. <laughs> Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hi from Brazil. E aí, galera? Where are you all from? I know a lot of my Brazil people are here. Elisa, Janjão, Felipe, Felipe Puto, Matheus, Yazir. Só a galera do bem. Everyone, yes, my Brazil peeps. Um, cool. India. Hi. See that. I hope I said that way. Loud and clear. Thanks, Max. All right, let's do this then. Um, well, for those of you who are not here the last time, I can do just a quick overview very fast, and then we can just jump right in. Uh, hi, Susan. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Mm -hmm. Suzanne Kim, she's very shy, but I'm going to give a shout out. She's one of my co-workers at Disney, and I learn every day from her. She's so inspiring. And when I joined Disney, didn't she only help me get to Disney? She also helped me um, navigate, you know, being a new person in the studio and everything. So that is there's no price of that right so thank you so much Sue. <laughs> uh all right um okay so let's take a little quick view on what we did last week and uh let's see what we're gonna do to continue it no let me share my screen okay let me put chat here for now one second to remember how to do things share and then i do this okay okay so just a little bit so you guys can see i'm gonna make it smaller but for now uh we end up here and for those of you who are not here we're doing the archetype called innocent so the whole story is that it's going to be a little old uh, lady, very happy, and she's feeding uh, these creatures that, like, are uh, taking so much advent advantage of her kindness of heart, and they just, like, messing around with her groceries, and they're just on her head and playing with her cane, and it's just chaos. So um you all learn my favorite word last, uh, last week, which is contrast. So for me to give the idea that this old lady is very innocent and sweet and nice, by contrast, I created this funny little kind of like critters or creatures that is going to take in so much advantage, but she doesn't care. She's just happy to be feeding them and interacting with them. So again, never forget contrast. This is a powerful thing. Now, let me make my screen smaller so we can start. Ooh. So you guys can see the chat here. Let me make ZBrush just a bit smaller so I can have, actually I'm gonna move the chat away. Cool. Do you guys have any questions about what I just said or what we did last week before we stop? Anyone? Everyone's doing good. All right. Oh, one thing also, um, a lot of people reach out to me saying that they are not comfortable creating their own concepts. 
if that is you, raise your hand on the chat. Say, that's me, Leticia, or something. And I'm going to be very honest. I'm not comfortable either. You know, like, the only way to, to do it is to go through it, right? So the only way for us to get better at designing and concepting our own, our own stuff, we just got to try to do it. We got to keep doing it, you know? And, like, doing my own concept is not something that I do all the time. So, you know, doing it live here with you all, it's, like, even more scary. So, but, again, the only way to do it is to go through it. So the more we put ourselves in that uncomfortable situation, um, Uncomfortable means that we're, there's, we're out of a comfort zone, right? So we're out of a comfort zone when we study, hopefully to learn more, to grow, to expand our minds. So again, if there's anything that you take from it today is that the only way to do it is to go through it, okay? So we got to go through this together. You know, you don't need to do it live because it adds a lot of stress like I am. But in your own time, um, you got to do it. Um, you got to put yourself in that uncomfortable situation because being uncomfortable is being out of your comfort zone, is being on growth, expanding mode. If you stay only copying concepts, and which is fine too, if that's what you like to do. But if you have in your heart the desire to do more of your own stories, of your own stuff, you got to put yourself out of that line of comfort and expand, okay? That's what I'm trying to do here with you all, and I'll get your help. Uh, and hopefully by me doing a bunch of this with you guys live, it's going to make me expand and get better at doing my own designs. Cool? So if you've suffered from the same thing that I do, just join me. There's on the only way is to go through it. There's not another way, unfortunately. Fortunately, I mean, you to grow, you gotta, yeah. There's pain in, in growth, as you will. Cool. All right. So today I decided, even though the main character is the old lady, because I want to have some fun today with you all, I decided that we're gonna start actually doing the creature. So I put together here, my husband helped me put together some of these um, uh, reference images. And every time you're going to design a creature, right? In my case, it's like a creature from another world. It's, it's not like a straight copy of a creature from the world, which this is like, what, right? What's going on inside there? Nothing. So um, I'm going to try to like combine some characteristics of different creatures and see what happens, right? I know that by default, my creature is it's something like a rat, a raccoon, you know, like little creature that likes to go through thrash, uh, thrash, no, trash and eat stuff. And, and you know, it's kind of like that vibe. So uh, I put together some. Also, I was looking for some creatures that have some different feelings, more like a cute, ugly feeling, you know, type of thing. Uh, so it's not too sweet. And uh, so here are some a few categories of that stuff. I'm not saying pug is ugly. I don't think so, but some people do. But, um, you know, just got together a few images. And again, you can put as much as you need to feel like you have a good amount of stuff to try. You see, this guy here, if I did just this, no one would think this even exists in the real world, right? So... Pugs are beautiful, I agree, Sus, but I don't know. Some people say that they're cute and ugly at the same time. Uh, this is like a rock under sea. <laughs> Shout out to Chris that helped me put all this stuff together. It's, it's nice also to get some anatomy um, drawings, just so kind of like, you know, to make things a bit believable. You got to sometimes, not all the times with cartoon, but sometimes if you're not sure what to do, you try to bring back some of that real world experience of anatomy and then you make stuff more believable, you know? So those are the reference images that I have to start experimenting. Like I said, like we're going to design together. So we're going to do a few tries and see what we like the most. 
And yeah, cool. So let's just jump right in. So I normally, uh, this is our layout scene. I'm not set in stone with that. Obviously, it's just an ideation. We're going to play with it. But to start a creature, I'm going to start uh, first with some symmetry. So I'm going to start in a different uh, tool. So normally, I go here in the star, press W, and then I substitute with the polysphere. That's how I start. You all know that. Who took classes with me at some point in life. All right. So again, let's start with something that um, we feel comfortable at first and then we see oh what if we change this we change that so in my head i was taking some pug proportions or like some elephant proportions you know baby elephants and rhinos and stuff so let's just play with that so small neck right they all have very almost no neck feeling and um a look at the side view i'm just gonna duplicate the sphere let's say this is going to be a little bit of the body okay make a big head again i'm just blocking stuff and then we're going to play with shapes cool so okay i put a little body here you can take this i'm going to put a few legs on it and i always start stuff from sphere I said this last time, but I like spheres because they have this epic pain, epic pain. I like spheres because they give you by default a taper shape, you know, there's a tapering feeling. And again, like when you're doing organic stuff in general, you want some tape. If you're doing very, very stylized stuff that it needs to be like noodle legs, like perfect parallel, that's one thing. But in this case, that's not where I'm going for. So if you want to get that kind of vibe by default, you just start from the sphere and then you get that for free. So I'm going to put a little leg here. You know, I'm going to crop a little of the foot. We can copy this to the back. Now we can mirror it. Then I'm doing a very basic block out. Uh, let me double check the chat here, see what you guys are up to here in the chat. Oh, Leticia, your work is inspiring. Thank you. Thank you for sharing a little bit of your knowledge and work for all. Congrats and success always. Thank you so much, Pablo. Thanks for joining it. I hope you enjoy and have some fun uh, watching it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And thanks for the kind words, really. Um, cool. So we put some legs here, right? And then, okay. So let's think about tails, for example, right? So this is very blocky, but we can kind of get a feeling that where we're going to. And we can change all of it, right? This is just an initial structure. We're going to duplicate and try different things. OK. Um, but for example, like when we think about like a pug, right? It has like, uh, I don't have any profile, but I guess there's a little bit. This ver the snout is very uh, flat in the face, where it's different from a goat, for example, right? It has a longer face or so like a giraffe and stuff. Um, I like the flat face because they're gonna emphasize the eyes a bit more. So I might try that first. So let's do this. I'm gonna duplicate and do something like this where this is gonna be sort of like the shape of the snout area. If I say something wrong in English, remember that's not my main language. So it's just it is what it is. Okay, something like this. And then we can get and block some eyes. I'm going to duplicate this there. And one thing that we love also is those big eyes, like this creature here has like those big eyes. Modern the front, right? So we think about creatures that are not predators, they're preys, right? 
um, in general, they have the eyes more on the sides because they get a wider view of what's going on around them, right? They need to be careful not to get eaten, right? Where when you see more predators, they have the eyes a little more in the front to really focus laser sharp on what they need to, uh, you know, go after. So in this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the eyes more on the side. Hide. Do you think about creature function as well, like pet versus wild animal? Yeah, for sure. Like on this case here, this is more like a wild. Too wild, like you know, a raccoon kind of know how to navigate life, right? Like on the city, but at the same time, they do pretty wild, right? So it's kind of like a survivor creature, you know. They, they they do what they need. And one funny thing that I learned, you guys know the term called um, chibi, or it's called chibi, right? Where it's basically this: if you want to make anything cute, okay. So this is a little character. So the chibi concept is always like, whatever you do, you put the mouth very close to the eyes in the same line. And it creates this sort of like very cutesy style, you know, where it's different from this, right? If I do this and I do this, it's still cute, but it's a little more adult almost. But when you put something in between the eyes or close, it just becomes very, it's like everything is one line is just so cute, you know? And so thinking of that, like, again, that cute but ugly feeling. So if I take, imagining that the here is going to be the nose, and I take this and kind of like align together more, it becomes cuter than if I put the eyes higher. Can you guys see what I'm saying? I don't know if we need more information, maybe, for you all to understand what I'm saying. But I think the drawings explain very well what I'm talking about. So. Every time you like want to do something very cute, it's like a formula. You just put uh, the alignment, like let's say I'm going to have the eyes here, and then I'm going to have the nose here and the eyes here. Just because they're aligned, ching ching, it gets cuter. You know, cute or I think that's how to write. Anyways, so. Cool. Uh, Sebastian asks, hi, Leticia, what would you say to beginners who would see other people work online and believe they are much more complex and skilled than their work? I believe they are much more complex and skilled than their work. You mean what I'm doing? I'm not sure. It's like that. What would you say to beginners who would see other people's work online? Ah, other, other people's work online. Okay. And believe they are much more complex in the other work. Um, well, you know, like there is a complexity level on the modeling, and then there's another layer that comes from texturing that can bring a lot of complexity to simple shapes as well, you know. And then there's another layer is when you know very well how to do your lighting and how to tell stories, you know. So that comes with experience, meaning again, like you know, what I said today, the motto of today is. To do it, you got to go through it, right? So the more you put yourself to work and do the job and experiment and fail, the more that comes naturally to you. You know, it becomes more comfortable to you to do those kind of things that are simple, but it looks complex just because you know where to put complexity and where not to put it, you know? So, yeah, that's, I hope it. Is talent important for 3D? Uh, well, you know, I think talent comes from observing the world. Like the more of a of a explorer of the world or curious about shapes and life and creatures and stuff, that makes already you uh, more propensive to art and, and any kind of art, not just you can be writing, you can be, you know, writing a song. I would say like it's important for you to Become a observer of the world, you know? Pay attention to things. How do they work? How do they uh, function? And how they work when the light hits? Or what did that make you feel? You know? And I think people in their childhood that explore them more, people say, oh, they have talent because they're exploring those things and, put in, in, and playing with it in paper or in writing or in sculpting. Um, 
but I don't think someone, in, I mean, there are some people, I guess, but like, I don't know what I'm saying, but what I'd say is like a lot of it is it's exploring the world and experimenting with, with it and then try to put in the media, any media, 3D, music, writing, you know, and exercising that. I think that's, that's you know, be a kid, continue to take care of your heart and, and feel, oh, you know, in awe with stuff. I think that's what it is. Cool. All right, so this is kind of the main shape first that I'm doing. And again, like there's no anatomy, there's nothing. I'm just like really doing some stupid stuff. We could think of it like having like maybe some ears, right? So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to make this very thin for now. And we can make some fun ears. I don't know what I'm doing. So the first block out, I'm just putting stuff around. And then we're going to play a little and play with proportions, play with different shapes, you know, and see what happens. Um, yeah, so it'd be like this. It's important to keep that fun aspect to like of when you're designing, if you overthink too much at first, it might become not so fun, you know, like sometimes when I'm, when I'm tense, I need to do something, I need to create something new. I end up not creating the best stuff because I'm not having too much fun. I'm not being a child, basically, you know, and like playing with shapes like we used to when we're kids, you know? So right now I'm just putting stuff and feeling, you see that I zoom out a lot because I, I want to get the feeling of the character, like how is it feeling, you know? Yeah, kind of reminds a little bit of Stitch, what a crazy Stitch, yeah. Uh, street level audio said, definitely feeling the fail. Having good mentors has been the best for Prague, for sure, for sure. A million times, like going to the right school, uh, buying the right class or the right tutorial, even free online stuff, or even, you know, following processes of people that you admire, all that stuff. It's so important, you know, and, and, in this day and age, you know, when I was young, here I go, right? Say this. When I was young, there was no tutorials online. There was, you know, it was only like written tutorials, like screenshots and stuff. And it was so much harder to get uh, cool information, you know? And these days, it, it's the opposite feeling now, I feel that like there's so much stuff that it's hard to know what information is going to benefit you the most. So again, you gotta do some research, you know, and and figure it out. Like, what are the artists you like? Or do they do tutorials? Do they take? Do they teach classes? Or you know, things like that. Um, that's the best way I think in this day and age to do stuff. So you guys can see here that I'm adding just a smidge of anatomy. It's very little, but if we look at the anatomy here for like a pug, for example, or a regular dog. You can see that there is like, okay, so let's assume we have the pelvis, right? And then we come here, we have the knee, and then we come here, and then I'm going to put some little toes here. And then same thing here, we have the scapula, right? And then we have here, and then it goes here to the elbow, and then it goes down, and then we're going to make a little foot. So you can see even on very simple cartoons, if you take advantage of anatomy, it's always gonna help you to create a little bit of understanding. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, it said, I think it's scary when you feel so pressured to be as good as the artists you admire when it's also took them time and small steps to get there. I don't know if I made sense. Yes, you made a lot of sense. It's very true. Like when you see someone so good, right? Um, we got to remember always that they all, everyone had to go through it. Some people have a smarter way, smartest ways to work, smart, smarter ways to work where they work with more intention and they really challenge themselves on the projects. And sometimes that can make a difference. It can be, a, you can improve a little faster, but at the end, we all had to go through it, you know? Okay, so we have this guy, 
Um, maybe we could think of a tail for it. We could think of being just make a shape for a tail. You know, like um, I have some friends that went to school with me, you know, and we all saw each other grow so much so fast, you know, and it's like we all have to go through it. It's no skip, but there is processes like that might make it faster. Like I said, like choosing the right place, like right school to go or the right. If you can't pay for an awesome school, just pay for a class, an awesome class. Sometimes one class change your whole vision. I took a class with a, a guy called Michael DeFeo. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, let me show his uh, a bit of his work here. Michael DeFeo. Okay. And this guy, he's a sculptor. Um, this guy here. He looks very young here, but this guy. And he is a, a, a right um physical sculptor, right? Real world sculptor. And then he transitioned to ZBrush and he did a bunch of his dev maquettes for many movies that we love for illumination entertainment for blue sky real movie and all this fun stuff here you see and i took one class with him and it like completely changed my way of uh being clean working clean you know before i used to work kind of dirty and then i'll take a long time cleaning now you guys can see that i work always clean my shades are always clean it doesn't mean that the character is ready but it's always clean you know and that I learned from Michael DeFeo, like um, I, one of the best classes I ever took, you know? And again, like it's one class, it might change your whole way of doing stuff. So do your research uh, and and uh, don't just go like whatever. Again, like remember that last week I said, you got to talk to yourself and figure out what you want. You are the boss of your life, let's say. So you got to do the research and find what works for you. You know, sometimes doing creatures works for a lot of people, but sometimes taking a very stylized class might be better for you, you know? So, yeah. So, okay. So, okay. Let's, let's say that this is one ideation, right? Of what this creature could be. I'm just going to put some, a little hand and some, some fingers, and then we can kind of like duplicate this and start playing with different ideas. And if anyone has any questions, put in a chat. Oh, there you are. So I was thinking his fingers could be a little bit kind of like cutesy raccoon hand, you know, like not too much. I, it's still a creature. So instead of giving life, I think raccoon has five fingers like us. I'm going to give it like three. But I want them to be long, so it feels like they could hold something, you know, like this, for example. They could hold something and, and you know, be cute, basically. That makes sense? That's how I design stuff. Being cute, that's the design. All right, so I'm going to make a few fingies and um, spread this in, spread it out a little, and then, whoops. Put a bit like this, maybe. And then I'm going to put one that's going to be kind of like the thumb. I'm just going to make a little fatter. And it's going to go like side, sideways like this. And then maybe this guy could be a bit smaller. So just a bit. So the, he has three fingers for some reason. We can try a different formation. But kind of like this. Okay. I make noises, remember I told you guys, so don't worry. I'm not dying or anything. All right. Something like this could be funny. And then, okay, right now I'm going to mirror to the back. For now. See in the back here. All right. And then we can do a mirror. Mirror. Oh, oops. Got to be careful now. I'm going to spin this out a bit more. This one, so we don't merge stuff that we don't. Yes, I think it's not going to merge. 
and just Let's mirror. Okay, nice. All right, <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, Mike is a fantastic artist. Um, uh, street level is saying, yeah, my teacher is Brian Wynier, and it's so hard to even be on his level. Yeah, it's hard, man. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta remember that you just need to be better than yourself from yesterday. This is so hard, right? Because we like to compare ourselves to people. It's by nature. So we got to remember, as long as I feel like I'm evolving from myself from yesterday, I'm on the right path. Everyone had the speed of, for example, at my own house, right? My my husband is a sculptor as well. and he, But he learned things much faster than I do. He gets things faster, you know? So sometimes I get pissed off at him because like something sometimes it takes me a long time for him it clicks much faster it's just his experience of the world it's his personality it's how his brain works it's different than mine so i gotta remember myself that everyone i can only compare myself to what i was yesterday right because it doesn't it's not productive not healthy to compare yourself to other people really because we all wire differently you know we all perceive things things click on a different way you know yeah, it's you versus yeah. What Sue said here, you versus you. That's it. You gotta uh, look at yourself yesterday and say like, maybe you did do a little something different this time. Or even if you look at yourself yesterday, it's like, oh, I used to be better. I need to move my butt, you know. So, but that's the only person you have to compare to or else you just go insane because you're just comparing yourself to something that is just not you it's not your brain it's not your body it's not your lifestyle you never know what people are sacrificing on their personal time to make personal work you know so cool all right um cool so okay let's move forward so I did this little uh, concept here, right? Simple shapes, again, we don't need to go crazy. You guys can see that it's very clean. Remember what I said, this, this object is very low red. And then I go to dynamic subdivision and I turn it on. So I'm not actually doing control D. I'm just turning on a, 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 let's call it a modifier that makes things smoother visually on the viewport, but I'm not actually adding subdivisions to my, to my object, right? Okay, so one thing I love doing also is like going here and like start doing a, a little bit of a drawing just to think about it like, okay, this is gonna be like this, maybe this gonna have a little nose here and maybe I'm gonna put a little row, fat row here, some fat rows here. We can put a little something. I can start thinking about what's gonna be on, on a drawing lab. Like, well, maybe I need a little more anatomy on the hand than palm. I don't have any much palm yet. And uh, the ears maybe could be even bigger like this, you know. So it's nice to have this little tool. It's called Epic Pan. You can download for free or you can, there is a pay version that has some other buttons here, whatever. But it's a nice tool. Like imagine I could put the mouth like this. Or, whoops, damn it, and put the eyes here again. Nose, or I could make the mouth like a pug, right? So I could do something like this, and then you have a little bit of a roll here, you know? Um, or, again, I could like have the nose here, or I could have the nose down here, right? So all of this stuff we can do with drawing, or we can do in 3D, we can experiment. It's just different ways to do stuff. All right. Um, yeah, gotta remember that he has 15 plus years on me. Yes, <laughs> right? There's, yeah, you know. Again, it's not that you can get to this level. If you, if you study smart, you can get far pretty fast. But again, don't, comp it, it's just, you're setting yourself to lose if you start comparing yourself to other people, you know? Um, you are compared to what you learned from yesterday. That's it. And I know it's hard. And I definitely compare myself all the time to people. But you, 
it's like an uh, exercise. You gotta remember yourself all the time, all the time. All right, so let's duplicate this. The way I do it is like, I take this whole thing and then I go up here and I do copy tool and then paste tool. And then it's gonna make a copy, identical copy. And then I can try something different on this soap tool. And then I can compare before and after, you know? So, all right, what should we do on this one? Maybe on this one, instead of having this little funny pug tail, we can give more like um, elephant tail, maybe. Let's check it out. There's a nice image here. <sighs> so good. All right. So, oh, but before we do any small stuff, let's try to make some bigger changes. Like maybe the head is going to be much bigger. I don't know. I'm going to put this here going to play with it. So I'm going to select the stuff and maybe make it much bigger like this. Could be cool. Maybe the ears, like I said, could be fatter. Parallel like this. Like, kind of like a field mouse, you know, mice, whatever it's called. Maybe the, the, a face shape could be maybe on this one a bit longer, a little more, and maybe a bit smaller. So as you can see, like I'm just playing around and thinking. Again, remember last time I said the word contrast? Contrast. So what's going on here is that I have this shape and then I have this shape. What is going on here? Pretty equal, right, in size. So if I want to play with design, Again, I can think about if I'm going to add contrast to this area, right? So there's two ways, right? I could make the eyes maybe much bigger, or I could make it much smaller, like this, and then make the mouth side a bit bigger, like so. That could be something. Or we can do the opposite. I could make this tiny, tiny, and then the eyes are going to be bolder and much bigger. Look at how more interesting it becomes just because of what? We're using the concept of contrast. Boing. Okay. So um, that is already cuter, right? Remember again, like if you keep things aligned in general, it, it you win by, like if I put the eyes here, the nose, they're all the same line, you get cute, right? That's the formula. Let's see. At least for chibi cute, right? The other kinds of cute. So that is one option. One thing we could try to do is maybe make the legs a little longer. I don't know. Any suggestions? Put on a chat. Maybe I'm going to make the legs a little longer and lower this a little. Okay, Rain said, hi, Leticia, for someone who wants to be a character artist in animation industry, how heavy do you think the portfolio should be in texturing or on their character? Um, not heavy at all. Like, you can have just colors. Like, if you poly paint stuff, you can just have some colors and, and present your model on grayscale. I, I like to put colors because it kind of, like, helps a little bit uh, with the feeling but you don't have to have crazy textures at all like if i open my portfolio for example um here um you know like stuff like this it's mainly a color with some specs and stuff but there's no anything crazy going on but it could be even simpler right it could be like no colors at all and as long as your shapes and lighting okay so okay now we're going to get into something so important, which is how do we perceive shapes in the real world without touching? If I'm not touching anything, the only way for me to tell shapes from dark to shadow, to, to shadow to light is through light, right? I cannot perceive in this model if I turn off, uh, if I put a flat shader here, right? Where is the flat shader? Here we go. If I throw a flat shader, Damn it. Why is it doing this? Okay. I don't know. Let's do it like this. If I put flat shader here, I cannot perceive those shapes, right? 
and it's very i only perceive silhouette uh, it could be a lot of details and crazy shit going on i would not know until i turn on the light right so the thing about some mullers that is tricky is that some people they they focus so much on molly and they do not focus on studying the basics of lighting if you don't know basics of lighting how are you going to emphasize your shapes because right now in zbrush there is a light here right there's a light coming from the top if i start uh changing this to a shader that actually lets me do it if i start changing this here on the light right i'm perceiving things very different right the feeling so you gotta be very careful uh, when you light your model so for any modeler out there that wants to present your characters better take a month and study a bunch of light a bunch a bunch test on your model test different techniques of light three point lighting four point lighting uh lighting from from the front lighting from the side etc and then you're going to see that you're going to present your models much much better okay all right so um all right what else we were doing here i made his legs longer maybe we could spread apart them a little oh yeah i was going to do the tail so we could potentially play with the tail here make it a little longer like this more like an elephant tail and kind of smooth a bit do a little something like this could make it again like i could make you see here how it's very thick right here and then it gets very thin so we could try that um it's like i'll leave it thick on the base and then i'll make it thinner later on again looking on this angle it's 3d you gotta rotate all the time and again you can see that i'm always doing small movement because i want my model to be clean at all times this is what i said i learned a lot taking michael the fails class and for me it works very well some people that doesn't work well they need to be doing crazy shit like this oh yeah and then take it down and then put it more and then put it here and that's how they find their character that's totally fine but for me it's like much better to work very clean it makes me less anxious yes that is what it makes me very way less anxious to find shapes oh. um I found studying product lighting and archivists very helpful. Yes. Uh, you know, funny thing, I came from archivists. Like, I started 3D on architectural visualization. So I had to study a lot of lighting. You know, um, when I started doing characters, I already had a little bit of a archivist background, which helped me present my models and my characters better, you know. Um, yeah, but archivist lighting, product lighting, so good to study product line so good totally right we could do this and then we could put a little bit of fiber mesh at the end here you know just kind of like what it's going on here choo, choo, choo. we could do a little bit of fiber mesh and put it on the tail we'll see kind of cute too uh, one thing also we didn't play at all with the shape of the head but when you i'm going to Squish a little bit like so. That kind of gives the feeling that has a little less brain, which which is also cool. Like you see, it's like giving a little flutter on the front view vibe to it. Uh on the body as hell as as well. Uh if we look at a pug, for example, here. Not much, but you can see here that the, the body it goes down. Oops, let me get a different color. It goes down and then it goes up like this, you see, the shape. And then the legs come. This is very uh, dog-like. If you think of a cat, if you look at a cat, this is way more straight on the cat. Uh, just how it is. But on the dog, it's a little, it goes up a little, so we could potentially play with that. Just move this up a bit and this down. And... Uh, Again, like give a little up here, a little down here. So I'm just adding amounts of anatomy, looking from the, from the top here, from the bottom. I mean, you could push this in a bit. 
And again, uh, we're going to connect the shapes eventually, but for now, I can just give a little bit of that. Connecting the leg already, right? So imagine that the, the knee is right here, and then this goes in a little, like so. And then here, the elbow goes right here. So I'm just trying to help myself with some anatomy to find some shapes, right? So if you look here, we have the knee right about here, right? So I got my knee here, and then the elbow right about here. And then I'm adding my elbow right about here. Whoops. I don't know what that was. Cool. All right. Any questions so far? You guys doing good? Sleeping? Cool. Um, Awesome. So let's compare already what we did before and after. So this was before. Look at how less pushed it is. It's funny. Always your first version is always less pushed because you already you're still trying to map things. So you do a first map and you start pushing. You see, you start getting more and more personality. So never settle for your first design. It might be that after doing five designs, you like your first one better. But in general, that is not the case. In general, the more I go in trading, the, the more I find like shapes that I like. So uh, this is one version also that we could do. So comparing here, see, I'm going to put up here just so we can have it. So I'm going to put this guy here. This is version one. This is version two, right? So we can try now. Uh, version three. So again, I'm going to go here, say copy tool, paste tool, and then I have a new tool to play with. And yeah, and again, just a reminder, you know, I said this in the beginning of the stream, but I'm not, design is not something I do in my work much, right? I follow a design and try to make it better and matches as much as possible. But so it's not something I'm super comfortable doing. I only do on my personal work. So, uh, you know, it's gonna hurt. It hurts, but we're gonna get there. I'm sure we will. We just need to have good reference and an open heart and we can do anything really, you know? So one idea we can do, we could try here, like what if his ear is super small and round like this, you know? be funny too um i don't know i like the big ears but let's try it small ears like this and then let's try the opposite we're gonna make the eyes small and then the the muzzle is gonna be much bigger like well it's becoming a koala not in the profile but in front view is a koala right look at that so again like if you're doing a creature might want to try not make too much like one animal only you know so i don't know about this year might need to we might try to like do bigger but rounds yeah not feeling it what do you guys think maybe i can avoid the ko koala ears maybe trying to keep the shape as we had before just make it small yeah, maybe the tail could go up by default instead of going down like I did. CS Marine said that, so let's try it. I'll place this tube up a bit more. Yep, like this. Look, look one important thing here. Like I'm always trying to make sure that what I'm doing has a decision, you know, has an intention. So I'm not going to live things like this, you know, uh, I want to have a decision. What kind of decision is going to be a, su a simple curve? It's going to be a little S curves, you know, but you just be careful not to leave things like, like it feels like you didn't put any thought to it, you know. Uh, that's one thing, again, I learned a lot um, with Michael, my time at Noman, you know, when I was a student there. Uh, be careful. No, I like to say to my students, like, you gotta work with love, 
you got to note that you're putting the right amount of love to the stuff, even early process, right? What if his body was like super weird and short like this? You know, very funky. And then I can move the legs more right here. Uh, that could be funny. Uh, maybe the mouth mouth shape could be a little longer on this one. Like has a little almost like a trunk trunk feeling like this 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 little guy here. No, not so much, but similar to this, we can try. And we can try also like again, one thing that it's so important in cartoons is to connect things, you know, like I could have this and then break and have this and break and have this, or I could try to connect things at once, you know, like do a little something like this. Look at how this shape is more decisive. It's more, um, it has more design in general, you see? So we can try that. Let's try it. So I'm gonna push this, to kind of try to connect that shape. Right, trying to connect up here. There's a little effort on both sides, both meshes. Trying to connect, and then here I'm gonna flatten a little bit the the area here. I'm using a so this whole time we've been modeling, I only been using the gizmo and the move brush. This is the first time I use any different tool, which I'm using H polish just to kind of like make a flat nose. And then this reminds me of Peppa Pig. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I'm trying to connect. You can open here just to see if you're connecting well. You see, I still have a little break here. I don't want that. So the silhouette mode is so good for this. So we can push this down a little and then push this up. I'm going to make it look down a bit more like this. And maybe the back of the head can be a bit shorter, like so. Um, yeah, that's cute too, right? What do you all think? Like a little more like so. And then we could potentially try to this wider. Um, uh, Elisa asked, Elisa. Elisa, amazing artist, also look for her work. She inspires me every day. Uh, she said, hey, Lynn, I've been doing some personal work while watching you stream. Was wondering if you are planning on giving feedbacks anytime in the streams. I wish we could, you know, there's not a lot of time, but if you want like a two, three minute feedback, I can certainly do it if you want. So yeah, let me know. <laughs> I'm not, you know. You you are a master already. You don't need my feedback, but if you want, I'll be glad to do it. <laughs> um, all right. Who? Um, someone else said, "But well, do you have to rig it?" Uh, not in ZBrush. I'm not gonna rig it. I'm gonna pose it by hand. Um, in in a different character, I can show you guys how I do a quick rig in Maya when I need to rig stuff. Uh, you know, it's a different skill set, different kind of fun for me at least some people don't like it but i do um but yeah you know i was not planning this project per se to rig anything but we can think about on a, on a different project i could certainly do a, a quick rig in maya yeah this one i'm just trying to go slow and have fun with you guys since it's the first one of the season yeah uh what else Anna said, it's very cute. Thank you. The ears could be down. Yeah, we could try that. Let's try to put the ears down. Maybe, you know, that's a good idea. What if we gave like some, some ears like this, you know, going down? Let's try it. Let's try it. I'm going to bring it. Just this. We might need to give a little arch to the ear before we do that. So... Uh, to give an arch to the ear, a very difficult technique here. I just do this. <laughs> and then, you know, it gives some arc, arch to it. Whoops. Gizmo jumping drives me insane. 
Okay, so we could put the ear down a little and maybe on the sides more. Let's test it out. This this doggy. We could try a big ear. See what happens. I'm very set on the big ears, as you can tell. <laughs> To try to bring it back a bit more. Um, we can try on the other one. I think on this one, the year up, the year up kind of gives that feeling of being a bit more perky, you know, on, on stuff on it. Just trying. See, maybe it has like thin, tall ears. Uh -uh. I don't know, maybe the head is too big or the leg looks too long for this guy. We can think about it, like imagine if he was sitting down. It's hard to predict, but I'm thinking like, what if he's sitting down and you know it's up like this, has the head here. And then the little arms in the front and then the tail going up would be cute. I want to do, I think we have about three more minutes. So we're going to have to choose from these three what we're going to do. But kind of the variations. Again, like because I don't design much, I might not be challenging enough to myself just because I'm streaming here. But you know, you could push way more like this stuff. Like I'm pushing very little, to be honest, because, uh, you know, I have little time to do it also. So from this three, all right, let's do a voting. We have number one running, number two, and number three. And then if you guys have any opinion at all on it, you can put on a chat. Um, all right, let me see. In your personal work, do you do any hair? If so, do you like to use XGen or Yeti or just sculpt them? Well, depends on the style, I do XGen. Um, but in general, all right, we got one vote for number three. In general, I sculpt hair because I XGen takes a lot of time. But for example, I can show some some examples here all right let me let me do the scores here you can keep putting the score let's see we got one for two two for three two for two keep rolling <laughs> um if i show here a little bit of my r station uh you can see that some characters i did x gen because he asked to it right i was going a little more stylized towards realism so i did x gen hair because i felt like he needed Sometimes I do modeling hair on this case. You know, it's just a lot of little tube, but still modeling just because of the style. I didn't want to do x -Gen. Um Yeah, but in general, I model, really, because I don't have the patience much for, for doing x -Gen stuff. You know, some people, they love doing hair. That's not my case at all. Okay, let's see. Where did I stop? One feels more balanced. Okay, so one vote to one, another to two, one super cute, one for three, one for three, three is winning so far. Um, if anyone else wants to vote, <laughs> oh, we can move forward. Um, cool. All right. Uh, yeah, so your. Your answer is like, if you like doing hair, yeah, you should do X-Gen. It always looks better and nice, but that's not me. <laughs> Alex asked, uh, did you work on Overwatch? Yes, I did. Um, all right, someone said two, someone said three. Let's go with three, one more vote. Uh, so let's do three then. I think I'll do three. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna delete here. We're gonna go with this guy. 
cool, Leo. Um, yeah, contrast, right? Always. Um, I kind of like the tail of of this one, though. The, well, I don't know actually which tail I like. Let's keep it this way, and then we'll see. I like the tail going down, but we can try it. I'm gonna bring the tail just so we can see. I'm gonna bring this tail to this one. Insert tail. And then we can just see what we feel like. We can do a mix and match, right? So let me turn off the other tail. What do you guys think? This tail? Um, I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, all can go in some really fun directions. That's true. Yeah, if any of them we could take and, and push it even more, there's no right or wrong, to be honest. Just a matter of like, what do you would like to start with? <laughs> uh, yes. So let's start with this guy. Cool. I think I'm going to make the ears just a little more um, round. Just because I really like the round ears for some reason. All right. Awesome. And we could play here, maybe bigger eyes, like so. Again, remember, right? Let's check on our shapes. We have this side shape, we have this side shape, we have this side shape, which is actually very similar, right? It's not like you have to have contrast all the time. It's not what I'm saying, but we could check it. It's always a nice thing to check. Maybe it's gonna be super bigger, or maybe I'm gonna make just a bit smaller, you know? So. I'm not concerned too much. Let's just keep moving forward. But I'm going to keep it like this right now. So one thing I like to do to test without having to merge everything yet, I like to put some eyelids and a little pupil just so we can get a, a better feeling of the character. Um, OK, so let's do that. So I'm going to duplicate this eye. Again, just to check, I'm going to make a little pupil thingy and put it in here. And I, I like the the pupils like this, going up like this. A little more creature-like. Put it in. Ew. He cannot be just cute, guys. He needs to have some ugly creatures too. So you know we don't we don't like him too much because he's not supposed to be super lovable. Okay. So we're gonna have to do some stuff so it's not just cutesy stuff. So I think the eyes like this makes him less cute. But we could make the pupils bigger, so it's just a bit more cute. Like this. Good. Okay. And um, let's keep some eyelids. NPT said big ears. Okay, if NPT said needs to be done, there's no question. So we're going to need some big ears. Sorry, everyone, but when the husband says you gotta do it, gotta do it. So, gonna put here some big ears, like so. That's the only moment he can tell me what to do is on the stream here. Not at home, friend, not at home. No, I'm joking. All right, so here, <laughs> the smile of the creature on the reference is creepy. Yeah, this little. This little guy, man. This one, look at this. So good. All right. Maybe shark teeth. Yeah, I was thinking of figuring out some shark teeth. I think it would be cool. Then easy said, they usually sculpt the models and retopologize after. For personal projects, I don't do retopo. I just use Ziri Mesher. But for work, yes, obviously, I always have to retopo stuff to for the pipeline, but but not here. Here, I'm just going to have fun in life, so it's going to be a little dirty, which is fine. Cool. So now let's give some eyelids. So the way I like to do eyelids, genius, no, I'm joking, but very proud of the way I do eyelids, which is to visualize it at least. Which is, I get a torus, a ring. It's called Ring 3D ZBrush, right? Get a little torus like this. And then I place it, we're gonna place it right on top of our eye here. 
put it here. Like this. Let's see. Frame the eyes. Make sure it's working well. It's like sitting like a perpendicular on the geo. And then, you know, you do that. So it already gives some, some personality, right, to the lids. But yeah, Lisa said, his look says, feed me your wealth. Yes, that's what we want from this creature, right? It's like one of those creatures that are, never have enough. They want more and more and more. And that's kind of like the feeling we're going. So one thing important here is that all is the same thickness, right? Which gives a different uh, uh, chibi look. Chibi is always like things are very uniform and cute and round and, and everything is very well thought. In this case, we're going to go a bit more organic. So what we can do here is basically using the inflate brush, we can add a little more thickness on the lids on the bottom, for example, and then a little bit on the top and then take on the edges. You see that I'm doing some tapering stuff. I'm gonna take here. So what happening here is like going thick, oh, thin to thick to thin to thick. Um, so that's kind of like something fun to do. Oops, sorry. Um, I'm just going to work on that thick to thin. Like this. And then it starts becoming a little more uh, less cute, right? We can also, we don't need to have the thick like right in the center of things. We can, we can change it as well. So for example, I can make it this uh go a little more to the side you know not to, too much just gonna make it a little more edgy like this right cool so let's get some colors right let's have some some fun now so because this is a creature from um I'm imagining that this lady, she's also gonna be some level of creaturey, like humanoid creature. So we don't need to go with like we can go crazy on the colors. Like for example, I really like how this color here, the purple, the cyan, and the yellow on this rock. So I'm gonna kind of follow that a little. And uh yes, sir said, feeling like the old lady already because I love him, he's so cute. Yeah, you see, everyone wants to be the old lady to feed these little creatures now. So you gotta find ways that they don't look so friendly. Um, so the way that I, I paint, uh, once JP Zhen uh, Zhang said, do you make the, the lids that way for human art characters as well? It depends on the style, yes. I think I'm I'm gonna well the old lady's gonna be with the eyes closed. She's gonna be having like that sort of laugh like this, right? She's gonna be like that. So she's I'm not gonna do it for her, but depending if I'm going stylized, yes, I might do this too. One thing you can do, Zhang Zhang, is this. If I get the Z Mahler brush, and you can see here there's a lot of um loops, right? If I wanted more, instead of the lid doing this, if I wanted more humanoid, like something like going like this and then going in, we can just delete some edge loops here. So I'm gonna go to the edge loop and then I'm gonna say delete and I'm gonna turn on edge loop complete to delete the whole end. And then I can go here on the side and see where the hell I need to delete. So I'm gonna delete this guy here, boop. And I'm gonna delete this guy inside, boop. This one book. Now I'm deleting some edges. And then you can see it becomes more like a, a, a you know a regular human lid. Um which which could work for him too. Um it's very sharp right now, but if we smooth we can get a bit less. So I'll keep it that way. Did you guys get that? Not let me know. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I'm just making sure it's clean. I'm giving a lot of love and care. You see, like, I'm, I used to be someone that was very concerned about speed. 
want to be a smaller do things you know and with time i learned that that just made me more stressed and now i work very slow you see with like very small movements and that makes me for some reason i enjoy much more sculpting this way you know yeah so i like seeing things clean all the way through this pop, this lid here is maybe bulging too much out, so I'm gonna pull it in a bit. Cool. All right, let's get some colors. So, as a shader, by default, I like to use the the skin shader or the zebra shader. This is a custom shader you can download. It's called zebra underscore paint, and it's very similar to the skin shader. I think the specular just a little more broad. So I'm gonna use this one. So this is my base, right? This is like white right now, it's a base color. So I think the whole creature is gonna be cyan and then we're gonna play with the purples and the yellows throughout the model. So let's get a little cyan, a beautiful cyan color. Something like, like this. All right, something like this. It's always nice uh, talking about color. It's always nice to find a palette. Here I'm using the palette of this image, which is, comes from nature, which is the best place always to find colors, right? But if you're not, you cannot find an image, you can always go to, let's see if I remember the name of this thing, but it's called Adobe Palette. Color wheel is not palette, is nothing to do with it. It's called color.adobe.com. So if you go there, um, I, I like to do that also when I don't know what kind of color I wanna do on my projects. So if you go here, there's a lot of different suggestions of palettes and you can move around and it's gonna try to make analogous uh, colors for you by default. So you can kind of get a palette or you can go monochromatic. So you have a monochromatic pattern, palette. I like the three, the triad like this. It's a good one. Um, you can move around. Complementary, it's a good one as well. So if you're not sure, you can just come here and generate palettes for yourself. Like I'm not very good with color. So I don't trust myself with color. So I like to use um, palettes from the real world where I'm like, wow, this color is gonna look great. Or I use this little tool here to sort of like start making um, different palettes, you know, you can do something like this if you want very, you know, pastel colors, or you can go more to the edge to get saturated colors. I don't play much with saturation like this, it's too much for me, but I like to go on the baby colors like this. Cool. All right. So we're going to put this cyan, so I'm going to fill, um, Feel everything. So I don't know if you guys know it's basic stuff, but if you go to uh, Subtool Master, you do a fill, and you can say color, and it's gonna paint all the subtools at once for you, which is nice. And then let's paint the eyes for now because I don't know much where I'm going to. I'm just gonna put some white and uh, not go too crazy because I we can paint a different color later on. But I'm gonna put some black on the pupil. On the on the um, lids, whoops, not like that. On the lids, I could potentially try some of that purple. Let's see what happens. Uh, some purpley purples like this. Maybe I'll go a little less saturated. We can change all that later. But you can see that I'm like. Um, try. Maybe the this could be purple as well. The whole mouth area is gonna be. One thing I was looking is that um, pugs like this pug at least, right? It, look at that. It's like it has this funny frame where it has this, and then it does this, and then it does this, and the, so the eyes connect with the mouth color, and it all becomes this shape, which is like a little froggy, right? Almost like you know. So it's amazing. So we could try something like that. Um, you know, um, let's see, let's go back to my reference here. 
So there's those yellow uh, kind of like a uh, beige um, tones that we can try. I don't know how I would try it. Maybe like from the hands down. Let's test it out. So I'm going to put some yellowish desaturated color. Like I said, I'm not very good with color, so we got to be patient. Uh, could be something like this, you know, the transitions like this. So, and then on the tail as well, transition. Ooh, I don't know. We'll see. Let's keep going. Um, on the nail, on the toes, I can make the same color just a little darker. It pops a little more, you know? So right now I have three colors and that's all I'm gonna have. I'm just gonna play with shades of these three colors. Like I have one, two, and three. Obviously the black, you know, the not counting, but I'm not gonna go beyond that because again, like I'm not good with colors, so I'm not gonna set myself to fail. <laughs> yeah. got very cute haircut i like it oh thank you <laughs> thank you I'm letting it grow now all right um cool any suggestions for now on the color we can play we can start i guess let's start merging some things and you know i always avoid merging this mix i like to go slow but i think it's time to merge. Oh yeah. So before that, we can think about how the nose is gonna be, right? So we took the reference from from this creature here, right? The, so the actual nose holes are like here, right at the end of it. Um, but we could have like different some nose coming up here, and then the mouth open here. I don't know if that's gonna be good, but um let's treat it the same way as nature and then we can we can see what we do so i can create some holes so for now i'm gonna dynamesh start dynamashing some stuff because i've been avoiding already for too long um yeah so i'm gonna dynamesh the the big shapes so let's do that uh, okay, so I'm going to turn on wireframe so you guys can see what I'm putting together. So the head, I'm going to merge down with the um, with the nose. Now they're one mesh. And I'm going to merge down the legs and the tail and the down here. I'm not going to merge the ears yet because I, I wanted to shape a little better before. I'm going to keep a separate... And then we're going to merge to the body, basically. And I'm going to keep the eyes and lids separate for now. All right, so this is what I'm merging right now. Okay. And the fingies, yeah, I'm not going to put the fingies either, because I want to shape a little better before I merge. All right. Let's see, entity said coincidence. I think not, no. Maybe giving him eyebrows would be good to be easier to show his emotion. Yeah, that could be pretty cool. We could go, we can definitely try some, it could be even on the color, right? Like if we painted something that has like a pattern that it is like a little pattern like this, and then it could feel like he has like eyebrows uh, from the pattern. But we can try to give some eyebrows too. Completely forgot about thinking about patterns, but um, you know, this purple could run, for example, all the way in the body. The purple will go all the way here, going through the whole purple color. So we can we can play with patterns as well because it's a you know it's a creature that doesn't exist, so we can have fun with that. But one thing that's so cool about nature is that when you go to like detail areas, the patterns get very smaller. And then the farther you get, they start getting medium, and then they start getting bigger. That is like love, you know? That's just beauty. It's like playing with the concept of big, medium, and small. 
wow that makes people so happy so yeah okay so let's uh dynamash this stuff like i said we're gonna go oh yeah i forgot to give him a little bit of a mouse shape huh i'm gonna do this very fast here i promise last thing so just so this is the top of the mouth let's say right do the nose and mouth shape and then for this one it's gonna be like the mouth the the jaw jaw area okay so something like this <laughs> what do you guys think <laughs> is that too much this or it could be a continuation more, like so, like it's one shape. I think that's better, right? I like continuation. He's starting to look a bit more stupid. I like it. All right. So, but if we Dynamesh now, it's going to put everything together, right? So what I'm going to do is going to flatten this area. And I'm going to keep the mouth open a little bit. And then we can close it later. Okay. Because you just isolate this guy here. I want to have the chance of opening and closing his mouth. So I'll, if we Dynamesh is going to obviously connect everything together, I don't want that. So. I'm just going to make sure I Dynamesh with the mouth open and then we can close it later, you know, here and then and open the mouth like so. Or we can leave a little gap and we can connect later. Doesn't need to be super open or anything, just a little bit so. It's easier to work with like this. All right. As promised, it's the last thing that we're going to dynamesh it. Um, someone asked, maybe giving him my eyebrow. Oh, yeah. Hey, I read that already. Cool. So let me put the mouth together with the body, the, the jaw. Merge down. Okay, and let's do a little dynamic. So right now, this is my topology, right? But the real topology is this one because I was using um, dynamic subdivision. It was looking smooth like this, but the real topology is this. So you don't want those squares on your dynamic. So now I'm going to really give subdivision, control D, control D, control D, because I want my dynamic to be clean like my shape. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go dynamic. Um, 128 resolution is always too small for me. So let's try 256. 256. And I'm going to say Dynamesh. Do you want subdivision levels? No. Nope. And that normally is good enough for us to start playing with it. So, yeah. So we can start cleaning uh, transitions, making smoother. Make sure you have symmetry on. Symmetry on. I'm just going to start cleaning some of these transitions like this. We can start cleaning here. Now it's when we're going to make things feel more connected, right? More organic instead of being tubes. So that's what I'm doing. You see, if you work clean, it's very easy at this stage, like to start making your model look good. Here. A little bit here. Uh, yeah, so obviously there's some weird stuff going on here. And then that's when I actually start modeling, per se, like sculpting, I mean. So I go very slow adding mass. Like everything else I like to do very slow. I, I don't do this, like, oh, yeah, no. You're not going to see me doing that. Only if I'm in an off day, if I'm having a hard day, I might do that. In general, I wouldn't do it, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I'm building my shape slowly here, like here. We 
we can also with the move tool, right? Just make sure that the tapering is still working. Here's my knee, right? So I'm still giving that taper feeling. Here's my elbow. And one one cool thing, if you're not if you're not comfortable working with nuances like this, like you know, slowly like this, it doesn't mean that you need to work dirty either. You know, you can always just like really make sure that you emphasize those key, you know, those bony landmarks. So I can go here with a sharp brush and I can just really make sure that I emphasize where they are just to help myself, you know. You know, you guys know the concept of establishing planes, planes of the face, planes of the body, right? So I love making planes because it helps me understand the structure of things. And then later I can smooth them away. So every time I'm kind of lost in the anatomy, I like to establish planes. So here, for example, now we have the very established. Doesn't mean that I'm going to keep it that way at the end, but it helps me a lot, right? So use your planes. Same thing here, we could uh, get a sharp, nice and slow with control. Great reminder, exactly, you know? Uh, there's no rush for to making cool stuff. You can take your time and learn. It's it's when you work with love. I like to say work with love, but yeah, you could say working slow. But when you work with love, um, you know things. You have more fun in the process. You know, like when you're like rushing to get somewhere. Normally, you don't have a lot of fun on the process. That's my experience. Obviously, it can be different for them. But I like to go slow because then I feel like I'm really like loving the model and having fun. And yeah. Cool. We can, I certainly will add some very cutesy folds, you know, to make it feel a little chubby. So at some point, I'm going to start adding like some little folds and folds here in the neck uh, because I think if he's chubby, he's going to be pretty cool. Okay, let's look at other angles. So I'm going to work a little bit more here on the anatomy. The legs are going to come out a bit more, the back legs. Looking from the top as well. Bit. Cool. And um, yeah, let's work here on the face. You know, the color is going to get messed up. That's okay. We can just smooth for now and then we can, we can solve it later. Smoothing things. Make sure, remember I said like I wanted this to be like one decisive line. So if I make my uh, silhouette big here, I can see already it's still a little bump there. So I'm going to push this out and make sure it's smooth. So it's a continuous line. That's called simplifying, which is very common with cartoon characters, right? You want to simplify uh, shapes. Uh, so what I'm doing here is very common. You're going to see a lot of big designers doing that. Just like figuring out how can I connect things. One simple shape. Boop, boop. Here's going to be the mouth. Here's going to be a bit. We could potentially do a little S curve here. Right? And then this goes up. So you see how everything is starting to feel like they connect. So here, for example, in the butt, I could make sure to push this in a bit to have this going as one shape on here. And then I have this, this sort of volume like this. Then this goes down then this goes up like this. Choom, choom, you know. So, and you don't need to be thinking about that since the beginning. I was not. I'm just seeing it now. I was I wasn't seeing those things before, so it's not like you have to think overthink that stuff. You you, you know naturally if you're looking for them you're gonna find it. You look for it. You're like looking at your model and it was like dupe and then dupe, 
uh, you might think, what if I did one simple thing? That's the question you have to ask all the time yourself, you know? But it's not like I was thinking about that before, you know? So, yeah. Okay. Just bring me here a bit more. Uh, here on the leg, we might give more volume in this area here. So, all right. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm gonna again like open this a bit more. Willa, Willa, how are you doing? Push this in. I'm giving some of those nature, you know, nature, the legs goes in like the. In, in, not super straight everything's straight looking straight so i'm playing with that like if we look at this guy we don't have a photo of him from the front but you would see that there is a certain angle you know let me see if there's anything here that can help us see that nope i don't have any but you guys know what i mean cool so I could potentially, if you guys see, I have round and then this coming out. I could try to connect everything at once. But again, it's like, how much do you do until, you know, like there's certain things that you want to have some level. Of, so that's the part of the stylization, right? You got to talk to yourself and see, should I do this? It's too simple. Maybe I need a bit more of, of breaks and anatomy on it, you know? Because if you start connecting everything too much, then you get to that chibi look, which everything is very, very, very simple, which is fine too. I love chibi stuff, but that's not what I'm going for here. So you got to be careful also to not like, oh, this is like connecting is good. And then you start connecting everything and then it's going to always look maybe too simple. And you're like, well, I didn't want it that simple. Or you did. It's up to you, right? So. Make the little the fetter, the back leg of the fetter here. Okay. His legs are awfully close to each other, which is kind of funny. I'm going to keep it it's like almost like some bre broken anatomy here going on. But I'm going to keep it because it's a creature, so it's fun. Fun to have it. Okay, well, I'm setting up some anatomy. And again, like if you're thinking like, how do you know you should do that? I'm literally looking at Pug's anatomy and kind of getting some of those cues and putting on my model. Because it's always nice to start from nature. Again, nature is the best designer. And then we go from there and try little things here and there. But even uh, like I was thinking, I was going too crazy in my mind and then I was telling what I was thinking of doing to my husband. And he was like, you're going too crazy. You gotta go back to the basics. What are the basics? Nature, always, you know? So check it out. Yeah, and shapes, shapes are always um, important. Oh, I moved, I moved the hands here. So just gonna, Move this, oops, turn on symmetry. Put this out a bit like this, and then fix this better. <laughs> For now, I'm gonna paint his, his no oh, nose, oops, the cyan as well, because that blur is kind of messing with my brain. So just kind of paint it off for now. Then when we do a proper paint, we'll fix it. One thing I like to do is to, for now, I'm going to separate the jaw from the rest as a poly group, just because it's easier to clean stuff. So I'm going to take all this area here, Control W, make a poly group. And then if I isolate now, I can just work on like the mouth, like pushing this in a bit. So, no. So it's easier to work here. 
again, I go very slow. Some people will be like doing this. Oh, I can't do it. My heart cannot take it, you know, unfortunately. I have to go slow with a lot of love. And not saying that those people don't have love for what they're doing, but for me, it's just too much. It, it makes me anxious. I gotta go slow. Cool. And again, for those of you who are not here in the beginning of the stream, you know, one thing I was talking about the, today where I want you guys to think about is the concept of um, to get to it, you got to go through it, right? There's no other way for you to get good at design. You got to do a lot of design for you to get good at sculpting. You got to do a lot of sculpting. There's no other way, you know, you got to try be intentional with your study, be smart. But the more you can watch, I'm, I'm sure everyone here did this in, in, in their lives and I still do it. I'm stupid. I am slow learning. But um, you you find a tutorial and you watch it and you watch another one and you watch another one and you think you're like, yes, I understand everything about design now. And then you go do it and you're like, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. That happens exactly because our minds, we can think of those things, but if we don't put to practice and exercise it, it's not going to come to you. You gotta do it yourself, you know. You gotta put in practice, test it out, you know. And and some things obviously help. It helps you click. And when you go design it, you think about those things, and it helps. But you're only gonna know if it's gonna work for you if you do it. There's no other way. No one can do it for you. It's only you. You and ZBrush or Blender, whatever it is that you like to use, you know. But yeah, um, cool, it's, it's kind of smooth here. We can give a little mouth bag to him. Uh, the way I like to do mouth bag, I like to isolate like this. I turn on double-sided. And then you see this little volume here. We can pull it out, and that's going to be our mouth bag. Doesn't need to be perfect right now, but just going to make, give some depth to it. And we can also use inflate to make it a bit inflate. Oh, it's inverted. Okay. Just to give a little volume there, see? It's inflate up here too. Mouse, inflate here. And then it helps create the, the mouth back. Again, we can push it more later, just doing a little bit so we can see. A little bit down here, too. Yeah, let's check it out. Polium, getting that, we'll get that. So now let's let's see what we can do with the nose. Uh, the mouth, I want to feel like more squarish. Like I had this decision of keeping this a bit more square, right? So I'm gonna try to. Even with the mouth open, I want to try with this is this little shape here. So if I clean it, I can come here and try to make it a bit more square here. A bit more square here. Again, look at this. I have this distance. I have this distance. Okay, there's a little level of tapering going on, but I could force a little more and it might look cooler. So I'm going to pull this up here to give more taper. To the ship. And all this stuff that I'm saying, again, like, is this is stuff that I need to be thinking all the time while doing? It. I'm thinking and thinking. And that's what I call modeling with intention, right? Is that you're modeling, but you're also questioning everything, questioning the position. Why did I put this here? Why did I do this? Everything needs to be a why, even if it's a simple why as I want a more taper. Done. That's why I did it. But I have a reason for it, you know? And uh, how do you do to work like this? Every day when you go model, you just set the intention to work with intention. And then you will. That's simple. But it's an exercise, you know? 
you're not used to it, uh, you'll have to practice again. Okay. Cool. So it's happening, it's happening. So now let's think about his nose. Um, boom, boom, boom. So let's look at some cool noses. Well, that character we saw, this is going down more, but I would assume that it's a similar nose as a, an elephant trunk, right? The little hole. But we don't need to do that. We can think about something different. I like the... Let's see. Let's try some, some style of hug, at least. Let's try it. Instead of talking, let's just try it. So let's think of this as this is going to be center here. It's going to be the base of the mouth. Gross. Okay. It's the shape. Let's try it. I'm just going to carve a little bit, a few different types. It could be like a big sort of a nose like this. It's ugly, but it could be. It could be a bit uh, smaller, more like stylized, more uh, parallel like this. It's too Peppa Pig for me. We could do a little more. So, or let me try something. I might smooth this all, smoothing more that shape instead of being, I'm just tr trying, instead of being this like this maybe it's a little rounder and it goes in and then this is going to be a little rounder as well so when it closes instead of being this shape when it closes maybe it will be like like this shape like this let's test it out so i'm going to smooth here the edges so it becomes more of like a round shape like this and then on the bottom here I have to fix it, but in the bottom here again, I'm going to smooth also so it becomes more round instead of squarish. It's rounder here. That might be a bit funnier. It's definitely funny, right? Shorter. What do you guys think? I'm not 100% sure, but. More screen recording software are you using? I'm using something called Restream, I think that's the name. Someone taught me how to use it, and that's all I do, but yeah. You like it? Okay. The boss likes it. We're on the right path. So. Put in here a little bit, right? I'm gonna keep it like this, and then let's think about the nose again. So we could draw. So we could put the nostrils now, like around here. Remember, I said like if the nose is kind of like in the line with the eyes, it becomes more chibi, more funny. Um, I would say make lower lip a bit smaller. Yep, yep, I think you're right. Let's try that. We could put the nose like this. We could make it tiny like this. We can make it bigger like this. That could be funny. Let's try it. So I'm going to get the carving tool again. I'm going to try um, more like so. If we try more in the bottom, that could be funny too. A little less cutesy. If we put top, it looks cuter. So maybe around here. And it could be something where it could be more flat in the bottom and it goes deeper on the top or the opposite. But let's keep it like this for now. Um, RD Multimedia said make, make this part smaller. I agree, I'm going to make it smaller. But when we close the mouth, let me try to close it very fast here just so we can see. So when we close it, bloop, it's going to be like this. That's cute as hell. Don't you think? That's cute. Look at that. Oh, okay. Yes. 
I liked. All right. So the nose is going to be like that. And again, for now, I'm just going to try to smooth because we don't have the proper topology. It's kind of like, you know, nasty. But we're going to do a little zero measure soon enough. So for now, I'm just going to do a little sharpening on it just so it doesn't look so ugly. Like this. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Funny. All right. Now let's uh, you can see that I've been jumping around parts and shapes. Uh, one thing I like to do is not stay too long in one area because I like them to evolve together, all the, the pieces evolving together. So let's check something out. Like I think the neck. I don't know what I need to do here, but we might need to have some like some fat row here on the neck, like something funny like this and go back. Do it properly. What do you guys think? Okay, do like a fat roll on the neck. Maybe even more. Something like this. And then we can even have like some fat roll up here. And notice some animals like on the tail, they have like a little roll. It's funny. Like rolls here. Eh, not so yet. But I think for the neck, we definitely need something like this. And then. Love it. <laughs> it's Encanto's mythological creature. It's an Encanto mythological creature. <laughs> so it's the, that's from my own make-believe world creature. From my own brain. Uh, cool. One thing that is very cool to do when you're making shapes like this uh, is that you you go inside like this going inside right and then you get the pinch brush and you pinch from the inside the roll and it becomes super clean and crisp from the outside i learned this from a guy called rafael Souza. he's one of my life mentors and look at how cool now like when you look from the outside it's, it's much more sharp and clean you might need to do some love still but you know it becomes pretty cool when you do it, the, it becomes like a cleaner transition. And I know a lot of people here learn from Raphael as well. And uh, that is one of the things I learned from him. Like you isolate this area here and then we go inside with the pinch tool. And then we pinch this little detail here and then it looks super clean and nice. You can do that for the eyelids. You can do that for any detail that's going inwards. It looks sharp, see? It starts looking sharp and, and decisive. Oi, oi! An Ani Castro said oi. Oi! Oi! So something like that. Yeah, he's good. He is really good. Um, he is... Um, a great friend of mine too. Don't want to brag, but he is a great friend. When you have great friends, you gotta brag, really. So I'm gonna do it. <laughs> but yeah, I learned a lot from him, especially on the early of my career, and still up to date. You know, I took I took his class like not too long ago. On uh, it was called gesture anatomy, something like that. It was so good and and. I learned a ton. So, right, got that roll going on. Um, cool. Let's look from the top just to see if I broke anything. You can see that I'm spinning a lot, and I like things when they're not clean. 
So it's hard to be fast when you want to work clean up. It will take the time that it will take. <laughs> That's the reality. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. So let's paint again. Let's try painting like again the the this whole mouse area here. I really like that contrast. And let's see if we can find the shape, kind of like that pug shape that I showed you all. See if we can find that for our character, right? So again, like we're looking at this one specifically, how it's like very frog-like shape. Doesn't mean that we need to do exactly that, but I want to see if we can find something that it's gonna do that feeling. So we could try to connect with the eyes to the mouth. I don't know. That anyone has a better idea? Tell me. This in and out. It could be cool. I mean, it's weird as hell. You know, it could be. Like this, and then I can mimic the shape and do something like this on the top. A small one here in the back. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, one thing that nature likes to do is to echo, right? So what I'm doing here is just based on research I did from nature, where you have one shape. You know when you like you drop a little rock, and, and it ripples. The water starts rippling, well, plop, right until we kind of dies. Nature does that a lot. It's one of the procedural things about nature. So what I'm trying is to get this and kind of echo, and maybe it will die eventually. You know, so uh, if we to look at some uh i mean like even like if we look at the eye right there, there's so much echoing going on here we have this and then we have this look thin thick and then we have this and we have all this echoing of shapes going on and and that can propagate until he dies right so think about that like a lot of the cartoony eyes for disney for example right you have this shape and then you have this shape which is the um iris and then you have this shape for the brows and what are all this this is all things are echoing from a point of start and then they echo and then they echo and then they might continue echo or they might stop you know so when you see something like simba simba's eyes or any old disney stuff to be honest like simba We can kind of see, wow, the image is small. Let me find a better one. You can kind of see the echoing going on here. See, you have this shape, and then you have this shape, and then you have this shape, and that creates so intense, you really focus, you know? So, so that could be something. <laughs> I don't know if it will be. I could continue even this like down here a bit more and then this one little like this. I'll keep it simple for now. Yeah. So that will be it. One thing I'm going to do is to get the eyelids and just make a smidge darker. I always like to like, oh, that was too much. I always like to just separate a little bit. You know, so this could be darker. It could yeah, I think dark will be better. And I'll get the same color and I'm going to paint inside the nose here. Maybe a bit darker. Yeah. And inside his mouth, 
could be maybe the same yellow or a more darker cyan. Let's test it out. So if I get the cyan, then make it darker and saturated. Again, like I'm trying to avoid changing colors because it's safe to play with three colors. That's what I learned in life and in school. The minimum, less colors you have, the it's easier to play, you know. So maybe that inner area could be even darker cyan or paint a little more like smooth like this, like that. I don't know. Saturated. Or if you want to create some shock, you can choose a very different color that you would imagine, right? We could try like the yellow color inside that we have looking from here. Cool, right? What do you guys think? I think I'm gonna go with the yellow, kind of different. But again, I'm not like picking a completely different color, mainly because I don't do well with color, but also because I was taught that that it's it's cool to maintain a certain amount of limited palette of colors, uh, so it doesn't become like you know, rainbow craziness. That's pretty cute. I think I'm gonna do that. Cool. Well, um. I think for the lids, we could try also maybe, let me see if lighter will get better. I'm trying to separate the lids a little more from, from the body. Maybe I'll go with lighter like this. Okay, so we, we gave zero love to the ears and we have two minutes. So I'm just going to give a little bit of shape to the ears. So again, I make a big brush, move brush, and then I'm just gonna give, start giving some curvature to it. And we can also carve a little bit on it. So just gonna isolate and do a little carving. I want them to feel thin enough that it could fold at any point, you know? I don't want a super thick. Just because everything on this character is kind of chunky and thick, I think it will contrast. What's the word contrast? I think it would contrast well if I made the ears a bit thinner, you know? Something like this. See what's going on? And then smooth a little. And before we go, I might propagate those, uh, you know, lines around the body as well. We'll see. Remember when we were seeing uh, this character here, that it has like smaller things around the eyes and it gets bigger throughout the body? So it could be something cool we could play with where I could get this and then um, paint some some little little details around the eyes, you know, something. I don't know. We didn't think about it, but I'm going to put some skin shader in so it has a little bit of subsurface just for fun, and then we can end the stream. So uh, on this material, if you want to add some wax filling, I'm gonna to go to the material, which is here. And I'm gonna go to wax modifiers and I'm gonna turn the strength up. But then it's gonna say, hey, you gotta turn on the, on the real time wax preview as well. I said, okay, okay. And then you go to render and then you go render properties and you turn on the wax preview. So it's gonna turn on on the uh, viewport. So wax preview, so you can see it's all waxy now, a little more jelly feeling. Might be too much, 
So I'm gonna go here and tone it down a little more. One thing I also like to turn on at this stage is the, if you're using the ZBrush 2022, there is an NVIDIA occlusion, viewport NVIDIA occlusion. So I go to preferences, sorry, render, and you go to um, preview AO, turn on the occlusion, and you can see that obviously it's very strong right now, but that's what the occlusion does. So uh, if I go back here to the occlusion, I have a ton. I can start going down a little bit and just give a little bit of occlusion to kind of like connect, give some of that connection feeling to things. I really like doing that. Uh, someone said, could be, that was my name. Should we name him? Yeah, his name could be Herbie. Uh, I think, yeah, we need to definitely start naming stuff. It's always fun. Uh, we could also try, um, we're running out of time. I'm sorry, but I could try to do more like this. It's more straight here, down. Or I could try to connect more like this. But that's something for next Sunday. There's no more time. Uh, I'm having too much fun. <laughs> but it's time to go. Um, how... And I do put the same screen black and white on my screen. Oh, you mean this thing here? This is called a silhouette. Um, I love this. Like, we can see what's going on with our shapes. So you can go here on, I think it's on preferences. And then there is an option called camera view. No, uh, thumbnail. Yeah, thumbnail. So you go to preferences thumbnail and you can turn it on and you can change the size here or you can just click and drag on top of it and then you make it bigger when you need to see something and then sometimes I make it smaller when I don't need it. Yay, so that's that for today. That's where we're gonna stop. And then next week we can, we probably gonna finish this guy and start the old lady and uh, start posing and all that fun things. So thanks everyone that stick around to watch. Uh, any final questions, anything before we go, just remember every Sunday, 1 p.m., we're gonna continue this creature and we're gonna start the old lady as well um, uh, to finish our piece, which is from the archetype called Innocent. So the old lady is the innocent, not our creature. We gotta remember that. It can be a little cute, but not too cute. Um, cool. Yeah, think about names for our creature. Right now we have Herbie, but we can do a voting session. And the people shape is really, really nice. Super weird, cute, great stream session. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Thanks for the class. You're welcome. Can't wait to see what you guys are doing again. If you're doing anything, follow me with me. If you put on your Instagram, tag me on the stories. I would love to see or tag me on, uh, I don't have Twitch, but you know, so only Instagram, I guess. That's that. Um, cool, I'm glad you guys are learning something. I'm learning too, trust me, every step of the way. Uh, and we're gonna pull through it, it's gonna be fun. It's just gotta have the courage to do it. Thank you everyone, and I see you all on next Sunday. Ciao. Let me put the closing thing. Thank you.